Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Culture Cast. I'm Chris Stashu, and I am joined by Eric, my good buddy, little little buddy, the the non predator predator himself. Wait, what? <laughs> and we are also joined by the host of the Projection Booth podcast, Mr. Mike White. You can call me a super predator. A super predator. <laughs> you know, the ult- is it the super? Or was it the ultimate? The ultimate is what it's called, right? Big. Oh, alt right predators? Holy shit, I knew it. <laughs> oh my God, MAGA predators. <laughs> MAGA? What the hell's MAGA? I'm going to be the biggest predator around. You're not going to know why I'm so big, but I'm very big. Oh my God. Well, it's going to be stupendous. It's going to be the most <laughs> terrific predator of all time. Uh, well, I, I can guarantee, guarantee you that that is not the case with this film. On this culture cast, we are talking about <laughs> The Predator. Shane Black finally getting to write and direct The Predator. We're taking a break from Samurai September, folks, so strap in. We are about to talk aliens, children with Asperger's, and. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. You said aliens, so I, so I thought, thought it would be like, like a weird yeah, son of a music bitch. thing. I don't know. I, I forgot, forgot the, the predator, predator theme, theme music. Okay, shoot me. Uh, I don't know how you could forget because they play it like every chance they get in the movie. I know it's, it's amazing. amazing. Wait, we have a word. Let me guess. He's done something crazy. Show me again, I want to break your neck. Welcome to the Looney Bus. McKenna. Nebraska Williams. That's Coyle. That's Lynch. With Murphs. Why are you here? I don't think you believe me. Come on, man. I had a run in with a space alien. <laughs> this fucking guy is crazier than the rest of us. <laughs> the fuck was that? That's the thing that killed my man. Alien. Guess who's back? It ain't a fucking question. Can't go to the bar when the presence of a living leg. Predators. They exploit weakness. Tracks its prey. Like a game. Seems to enjoy it. That's not a predator, that's a sports hunter. Well, we took a vote. Predator's cooler, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Do you have a plan? Ex sniper with PTSD and a team that's mental? You're insane, right? Yeah! Gentlemen, they're large, they're fast. And fucking you up's their idea of tourism. Figured something out. I think we're gonna die. Just pointing it out. A big boy's a hunter. He brought his dogs with him. I can't get a race there like a lie. One shot, one kill. This real I am. One shot if you wait, ready to die. Never need it fucked up. I got shooters behind. Come on! You are now not in the presence of nice guys. The Predator. Only in theaters, September 14th. So the film is, like I said, it's directed by Shane Black, who was a character in the original Predators film. This one is written by Fred Decker and Shane Black. If the name Fred Decker is familiar to you, it's because he wrote the script for the original Predator film. Uh, Film stars Boyd Holbrook, Trevante Rhodes, Jacob Tremblay, Keegan-Michael Key, Olivia Munn, Thomas Jane, Alfie Allen, otherwise known as Reek from Game of Thrones, and Sterling K. Brown, otherwise known as a character that just fucking dies off screen, more or less. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, So we're going to talk spoilers because I don't think there's any way we can't. So I'm going to kick it to Mike first. Mike, what did you think of the now, what is this, fifth Predator, sixth Predator movie? It's the sixth Predator movie. Jesus Christ. Um, Well, I don't think they earned the article because first off, there's there's more than one Predator. So I think that... They, they needed to have it pluralized. Um, so grammatically, this movie fails across the board. <laughs> but it was about the sexual predator that was actually in the film. Yeah, the predator. <laughs> oh, he's not a sexual predator, is he? Well, he was in the, the last one, the last oh, good right. predator film. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it while I watched it. I had some fun. I laughed at some parts. Um, but even as I was watching it, I was just like, man, this movie is edited really choppy. So yeah, 
um, I had some issues with it. Let's say that. What about you, Eric? Um, I went and saw this movie on a Saturday night in a packed theater with a few beers and some of that good California weed in me, and I had a fucking wonderful time. And that's how you should enjoy this movie, because it's just dumb action aliens versus the PTSD adult ex-marine fun, if that's a genre. Because it is, I don't know, this movie was a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. Everybody, like me included, I definitely went into this movie thinking like, oh my god, it's going to be so brutal and hardcore and it's going to be the predator that we always wanted it to be. Like, it's just going to be so fucking like gnarly that it's going to be the shit. And this movie was an action comedy uh, if I have ever seen one. Uh, And I don't know, man. Is it good? I I wouldn't go as far as to say that it was good, but it was fun. So yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I did not think this movie was very good. I thought it was okay. Um, there was a lot of stuff in this film that, like Mike mentioned, really just kind of doesn't work in the grand scheme of things. The last thirty minutes of this movie, and this is pretty much echoing what everyone else has said. The last thirty minutes of this movie are a fucking train wreck. They are. It's so muddied and all over the place characters that we've been led to care about for the entire film just kind of die in and some of them in ways that feels unearned uh i want to talk specifically about serling k brown's character who dies so quickly that i'm surprised that his character was made to be so important from the get-go because he fucking just blows his head off by accident with one of the predator's shoulder cannons it's that is exactly what happened so hard when that happened i was crying but like it's a funny way to kill off a villain because he's like the film's secondary villain but at the same point he dies so quickly like clearly by mike's reaction they don't even do a very good job of letting you know that's what happened i i mean i honestly if you put a gun to my head or even a, a predator shoulder rifle to my head and told you uh, and asked me how did he die I wouldn't have been able to tell you I can remember the guy getting chopped in half by the force field I can remember uh, the two guys shooting each other but I really can't tell you about him so wow yeah I totally like I was like yeah whatever happened to that guy Hmm, because they didn't dance I was expecting a dance off at the end of this film I was expecting them to dance like Bruce Willis danced at the end of the last Boy Scout that's what I wanted I wanted him to do a fucking jig oh my god I wanted a footloose of palooza is what I wanted I wanted some Kevin Bacon on Tanner Kevin Bacon action that would be good for me yeah because i like sterling k brown a lot and i didn't necessarily understand what he was popping in his mouth at the beginning that he kept chewing on was it gum was it antacids or something i felt like that was meant to be a plot point yeah well there were a lot of things is he dying and it's like staving oh, off him oh dying? oh and then and then like it doesn't kill him because he's dying kind of like how it didn't kill maria conchita alonzo because she was pregnant Or how about this? We're going to have Olivia Munn stripped down naked and it doesn't bother her. And then she brings up specifically as they're running upstairs, she ADR screams out, I was naked and unarmed and it didn't attack me. This will come up later and it never does. And can we talk about the fact that Olivia Munn is the least believable scientist since Denise Richards in the world is not enough? I was going for the... um, uh, oh, gosh, I can't even remember her name from the saint who keeps nuclear secrets inside of her bra. But, yeah, I'm right there with you. I was not buying her as a scientist. And then just that whole I wrote a letter when I was six years old and then it got cross-referenced when I wrote this paper. And then they suddenly hired me to sniff out aliens. What? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I have no idea. This yeah, movie but, uh... is one of those movies where if you – Look at it like it's fun. Like I totally agree with you. When you when I was watching it, I was having fun. There were moments where I kind of paused and was like, "What was that?" And then I just kind of let the movie take me on. But as soon as you stop and you look at this thing, it turns to shit. No, yeah. The second that you stop and think about this movie, you realize that it's not awesome. 
<laughs> Which is unfortunate because the original Predator isn't that way. Right. Yeah, it's just it's this movie's just really badly put together. Uh unfortunately, like there's no character to latch on to, like the main guy who's like the main protagonist, I guess. Uh what the fuck is his name? McKenna. Boyd Boyd Holbrook is the actor's name. You'll recognize him as the just as milk toast boring villain from Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, anyways. Anyways. yeah, excuse me, Logan. You're right. Yeah, so Wolverine Logan. is a completely different bad movie. <laughs> but as I'm watching him in this movie, I'm like, wasn't he the leader of the squad in Suicide Squad? He totally <laughs> seemed like the same guy. He's interchangeable <laughs> with Joel Kinnaman and uh, Clint Eastwood's son. Yes. Ex- oh they're, my- like the, oh. Um, they're like the American versions of Sam Worthington and Jai Courtney. You were just talking about all of the uh, the black holes for charisma here. My goodness. Yeah. I don't think Joel Kinnaman is American, though. No, I think he's from New Zealand or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah Joel Anyways. Kinnaman. No, I think actually Joel Kinnaman is... Um, I think like he's like Swedish, Swedish or Norwegian or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the same thing as New Zealand, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yeah. They're all shithole countries last time I checked. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh I hear you. Don't up. let any of them in. MAGA, uh, dude. You know what I'm saying? Let's get political on this podcast about predators. I gotta go. <laughs> You're about uh, to get doxxed. He's also like, I mean, I mean, when I think of these these like American actors that are voids of charisma, I'd almost be tempted to say Garrett Hedlund, the guy from Tron Legacy, as well. Wow. But Sometimes I, like- I forget that that movie even exists, and it makes me happy when I forget that it exists. Okay, I like Tron Legacy, so okay, but I, mean, I like again, the, I like the soundtrack. Well, the soundtrack. It's because it's just a Daft Punk album. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like Boyd Holbrook is as charismaless as Garrett Hedlund is. It's really bad. The fact that you even know any of these guys' names are is completely they're, baffling to me. They're very interchangeable, but I know their names because it's easier for me to keep them straight in my head as to who they are. Gotcha. You got to keep track of the ones you don't like. I don't like any of them. I mean, none <laughs> of them are very good. I was even surprised to see that he mailed that wrist thing off to his son because I was like, well, I thought he just handed the helmet off to the dude who so carefully in this little, speaking of shithole, in this little shithole country that they're in at the beginning of the movie after they have the new shit. Mexico? (laughs) Sure, Mexico. Yeah. Um, that, that guy wrapped that package so nicely. It was, he did such a good job and had the bubble wrap and everything. He really did a great job with that package wrapping. Can we, speaking of package wrapping, can we talk about Jacob Tremblay in this film and his character of the, uh, the child with Asperger's? Uh, oh. as soon as I said Shane Black was doing a Predator movie, I just said, oh, great. So there's not going to be a little kid character in this. Thank you. God, but he managed to fit one in. Yeah, he really did. And while I actually kind of like Jacob Tremblay in Room because that movie is a is a pretty good movie. Uh, boy. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> right, not that one. Yeah, that's the one, right? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, the only one I know. Oh, hi, Predator. Uh, yeah, in this movie, he is not good. <laughs> I mean, he's not given anything to do other than run around and blow up like a crackhead's house with the Predator helmet. Yeah. I saw this like, whole thing before in uh, Simple Simon, a.k.a. Mercury Rising with uh, w- with Bruce Willis. Uh, what was that? 15 years ago. Yeah. Wasn't that Haley Joel Osment, too? I don't think so, no. Oh, what a bummer. Yeah. Uh, What's he up to yeah. these days? Uh, he looks really fucking weird. <laughs> he's, he's not awesome. in the predator. He's not in the predator. Is the real issue? Yeah, I think Haley Joe Osment is really having a comeback. I think with Tusk and then uh, cameos and various things. He's. I think he's gonna be all right. You know, as much as I like Tusk, saying that someone is having a comeback with the film Tusk, that that sentence does not hold water. <laughs> not even in the fucking slightest. If you're me, it does. <laughs> Look. If you say you're having a comeback with Kevin Smith, you're not having a comeback. I don't know. I would beg to differ. It's just you're coming back in a different, weird way. Anyways, back to the Predator. So, uh, <laughs> so I mean, like you mentioned, Mike, this film doesn't seem like it was edited by by one somebody person. who knew. It's it seems like it was edited by somebody who was figuring out how to edit things on the fly. So. May I give my example as far as like when I just completely had to stop and think about what the fuck was going on? Actually, there were two points 
right in the the near the middle of the movie where I was just like, what is going on? The first one, and it's a dumb one, when they show up with the RV. Well, first off, because I'm like, well, where's Olivia Munn's character when all of these guys show up in Boyd Holbrook's house? And I'm just like, okay, so all these guys are there. Where's the woman? Did they rape her and kill her or something? Uh, where's she at? And then, no, she's outside in the RV. Where'd they get the fucking RV? That's what I was thinking about. Thank- Actually, I hate to interrupt, but no. I, I was trying to figure out where that edited out scene was. In the movie, with the dude who is the sexual assaulter predator, the actual predator. Um, And I'm pretty sure that's where it is. It had to have been. Because, yeah, she's not there. And then all of a sudden, an RV shows up out of nowhere. And it's not ever talked about how they got it or where they got it. So my thoughts were, oh, that must have been the scene that they fucking cut out of the movie because the guy wanted to bang his cousin or some fucked up thing like that. Then the second part that just threw me for a loop was they're at that baseball diamond and they're all running away and the super predator shows up and blah, blah, blah. And they show this shot of the dog who was actually friendly to the kid and the dog's running, running, running. The dog's running, running, running towards that RV And then they never show the dog get in the RV. And I'm just like, did they just leave that dog to die? And then later on, when the predator dog shows up, I was like, did they screw up? Was that supposed to be the predator dog chasing them? And they cut to the regular dog outside? Like, I was just totally confused by that whole thing. So what happened to the dog? Did the dog die? Or was that shot supposed to tell me the dog's okay and it ran away someplace else? You know, the real sad thing here is that both you and I were more invested in a dog on screen than the actual characters. I was more invested in that predator dog than I was in the predator a lot of times. Well, the predator dog also felt very tacked on. And like it, it felt like a unrealized idea. You know it was so stupid. Spit up weapons whenever it needed to. WTF. <laughs> right? What the fuck is going on? You know what's so fucked, though, is they had predator dogs in Predators. Right. And they just decided that those dogs weren't canon, and they just wanted to use different dogs. Yeah, it, they didn't look the same, and then these like, dogs had to the have fuck? dreadlocks, and it just looked ridiculous. It looked like a... a and a predator had sex with a gigantic bulldog, and then that's what happened. You know what the you know what they looked like? They look like those dogs from A Nightmare on Elm Street: Freddy's Revenge, the ones that have like the human faces on them at the end of the oh, movie. That's what it looked it. like. Uh, well, don't because it's the worst uh, of all of them. Ooh. Maybe not the worst because it has a lot of like homosexual undertones, which are a lot of fun to just kind of sit there and be like, did, "How did no one know?" Oh, is that the second it's, one? Yeah, the yeah. second one. Yeah. Oh, they knew. They knew. Oh, they of course they knew. Yeah, yeah. I I interviewed the director, so yeah, he talks a lot about that. Oh, Chuck uh, Chuck Shoulder. Yes. Yeah. 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 They all like to play coy, but we all knew Freddie wanted some of that gay ass. So. so t- Talking about canon and what's not canon, because this movie is supposed to fit into the canon, and but it, yeah, it kind of forgets that Predators movie with the super with the dogs and then the whole super predator and the whole idea of the super predator and the regular predator and that they rip out the spines for the spinal fluid and they're making this super predator with all of these things from I all of the galaxy super predators they're just upgrading all of themselves that whole thing again oh. you think about it too long and it just turns the shit right in front of your eyes it reminds me so much of what they did on the the two new seasons of the X-Files where they went back in and started retcon tinkering with the origin stories of stuff and it's like why do you need to do this there's no need that like nobody gives two shits about predators with recombinant human predator DNA like who cares well and it's if you're like, going to do that that's not why I went to see the predator yeah. let me put it that way well and if you're going to do that right we've seen the predator fight other alien species we've seen them fight literal xenomorphs from We've aliens seen the predalien that's a that's a hybrid so how about we see towards the end when the predator is threatened at one point he grows a second set of jaws or he suddenly has a tail that can whip around or he has acid for blood or something or some other 
alien thing, instead of just being a large CGI version of the guy in the suit, because as soon as that CGI alien comes out, I'm just like, this looks like crap. It, this the suit, the look. rubber suit looks so good, and it the does, CGI right? looks so bad. Yeah, it, but let's all be honest. The Jean-Claude Van Damme original design in the original Predator movie was better than all of these. Am I right? All right, I'm definitely quitting the podcast right now. This is the, <laughs> the moment walking, that it happens. <laughs> the upright walking lobster. <laughs> When the alien, when, sorry, when the predator is running across the tops of those, like I don't know, they look like oil derricks or something, wherever the the secret base is. When it's running, booking across those things, I was like, this looks great, man. This guy looks really good. He's moving fast, and the suit looks fantastic. And then you get to that like eleven foot super predator standing in the road i'm like that's not a real thing i was like shoot it like fucking gandalf or something just take a regular predator and make them look bigger just use force perspective but this cgi behemoth does not look good it just looks awful well and here's the crazy thing the the things that bother me about just the predator the character in the film the two predators the super predator and the normal predator if the original predator is landing on earth to help out humans (laughs) why does he start killing everyone the second he wakes up like yeah. he just starts mercilessly fucking murdering people, like cutting uh, them apart, using them as bullet shields, slicing their heads off. Holy shit! Okay, Second I come issue. in peace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. peace. There can be no peace. I I am only here to help. Just let me get back to my ship, and I'll help you out with this really cool thing. <laughs> just let me slice your fucking head off first, and look at Olivia Munn bare ass in it in the shower. The- well, think about it. If you woke up in a lab, but ass naked and a bunch of people around you studying you is the first thing that you would do go like all right guys let me explain no you'd wake up and you'd be but like again he's there to save humanity allegedly allegedly right allegedly okay. fake news fake yeah. news. fake news fake news second point of contention here like you were talking about with the super predator the giant predator it reminded me so much of logan like the actual villain is just the same thing like they and, don't look different it's just a bigger predator yeah. that has like a sh- x instead of having the helmet which protects the normal predator the super ultra the predator has, has an exoskeleton uh, underneath his skin so wow. isn't that a regular skeleton? Ten right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him just grow an exoskeleton under his skin? You're a scientist. That sentence you just said made no fucking sense. Well, hold on. Let's not forget that Shane Black, who fantastic writer, questionable director when it comes to casting. No. Terrible writer. If he wrote this movie, it's bad. He wrote bad things. I want to know who wrote the line where they keep taking the piss out of the name The Predator. Right. Yeah. Well, that was that just got funnier every time they said it. Yeah. I was like, okay, so you're just going to bury your film right from the get go. It doesn't matter. You know, like. Oh, I know it doesn't matter because they don't seem to care. That's the problem. You know, you know what really bothered me about this movie more than anything else, which is like really stupid that this would bother me more than anything else, is the fact that the movie Predators, which only came out like six years ago, five years ago, not that long ago, is completely and utterly like not even a thing in this movie like they don't acknowledge it at all they just skip over it By and the i way, think predators, predators, predators came out in 2010 they did 2010 yeah, it's, it's been out for almost years a ago. decade now bro well whatever dude that movie was still badass and it should have had its day in court and i think that predators is the most underrated I think, sequel to maybe any action, alien, franchise, whatever thing, maybe ever, because nobody talks about it. And that movie kicks total ass. Because it's not just another goddamn Predator movie. Yeah. They flip the whole thing on its head and it's awesome. And Because that's the ultimate problem with this movie is that this movie is just like The Force Awakens or any of these like soft reboots that we've seen. They want to... They want to have their cake and eat it too. They want this to be canonical, but at the same time, its own thing. I mean, they do reference back to the original films. I mean, you have Jake Busey playing a character that is the son of his father in real life and in the film. His father's character from the 
from Predator 2. They talk about the Predator, the original film, or just Predator, I guess, as it's called now. Yes. They talk about that film a little bit. They do mention the Predator and Predator Predator 2. They don't mention Alien vs. Predator or AVP Requiem. No. Nope. So. And they, like you mentioned, Eric, they don't talk. There is no continuity with Predators. So the question is, is where is this in the timeline? I initially thought when this film was announced... It was going to take place, it was going to be like they're doing with Halloween, where it was going to be like the true sequel to Predator. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was expecting, too. And it's just kind of this hodgepodge of like references to the first two Predator movies and then just like a bunch of extra bullshit that they just like made up that they thought would sound cool. Like the whole thing with the Predators hybridizing themselves with like the like whatever species they're hunting or whatever, like they find the strongest one and then they use that to like boost their level of awesomeness and then they kill everybody else. Like that's stupid. That's literally never been in any Predator thing ever. Why would a Predator need to boost its own DNA with human DNA? The answer is it wouldn't because Predators are more badass than humans in literally every single way so much so that they hunt the goddamn xenomorphs right it's not yeah. they're not using dutch's dna you know he survived it's, it shouldn't be the people that they managed to kill even if it takes them a while to kill it should be the ones that survive if they want anything but yeah it's it that just it doesn't make any fucking sense the way that they're yeah. doing it the fact that there was no arnold schwarzenegger cameo in this movie just means that they knew that they didn't write a strong enough sequel to the original to even justify calling Arnold to get him to well, come. Hold on down a to second. Hold on a second. They did write a part for Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger and he was turned like, the that, part down. He was like, that movie sucks. It looks like it's it, uh, it's garbage. It looks terrible. But do, you, do you know why he turned down the film? Do you know what his do you know what his cameo was? I think he would have shown up as Dutch at the end in that uh, coffin because when as soon as they said Predator Killer, I was like, well, the only Predator Killer I know is Dutch, so he should get up. It should have been Adrian Brody, all haggard looking. That's what from I Predators. Yeah, that would have been so sick because then it would have tied into Predators and we would have been like, oh, my God, this is cool. Exactly. And that makes sense because it doesn't take place on Earth. And yeah, right. Awesome. So the original ending that they had kind of ruminated over and had Schwarzenegger read the part for was at the end when Boyd Holbrook and Olivia Munn and his son kill the Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger would show up, a helicopter would touch down and Arnold Schwarzenegger would come out as Dutch as like a commander or like a colonel or something and he would look like old like Schwarzenegger does now and he would have some line to Boyd Holbrook's character kind of commiserating with him about killing the predator those things and show how to kill yeah something he would just that show effect. up he'd just show up look him dead in the face and he would just say get in the chopper yeah so, something to that effect <laughs> and Schwarzenegger was like that's not good enough so Schwarzenegger instead of doing the predator by the way he decided he was gonna be part of the Terminator film that they're making I thought they would do the same thing that they did with that was that was it the piece of shit fourth movie or the piece of shit fifth Terminator where he was like computer generated younger Arnold you know, and that that would be the Arnold that comes out of that coffin would be like oh, the Terminator. That was the back. It was the McG one. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the McG one, uh, the Christian the Bale G1. one. Yeah. So that like that would come out of the, the coffin. But yeah, that whole thing where it's that gun and then that stupid. Does this come in a 42 long? I mean, that was just ridiculous ridiculous I, I was oh god that was so sad just so sad and then of course because every movie has to end this way i stayed through the entire end credits and then when sam jackson comes out and he goes to that character and he says i'm putting together this thing called the avengers initiative i want you to be a part of it i <laughs> uh. so before we get into uh, a, a more in-depth discussion of the end of the film, let's take a quick break. When we get back, we'll finish up talking about the film. Have a hunger for horror? A yen for Yelp yarns? Then give your blood-curdled bones a boon and tune in to Chronicles from the Crypt. Join sordid slime slingers Casual D. Chris and Father Malone as they take on HBO's groundbreaking television series, Tales from the Crypt. Here's what the rotting and rancid rabble are saying about Chronicles from the Crypt. <laughs> 
from the crypt. You have nothing to lose except your life. Who is Carl Kolchak? He's a reporter. Now that is news, Vincenzo. News! And we are a news paper. We are supposed to print news, not suppress it. With the INS... What's an INS? Independent news servicer founded in 1904 by Enrico Peluzzi. Who seems to have a nose for the strange and unusual. Well, last year in Las Vegas, I uncovered a series of murders that turned out to have been committed by a vampire. And what is the Kolchak Tapes? It's a podcast. All about Carl Kolchak. What's a Kolchak? The Night Stalker. And where can you get it? On iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and at www.kolchaktapes.com. As foolish a game as any that Gory the Ghoul could make up. Here's what some people are saying about the Projection Booth Podcast. Week after week, I'm mesmerized by the focus given great films and questionable films alike. But every episode is a learning and entertaining experience. This is hands down the best movie podcast. They cover so many different genres across so many years, from obscure movies to blockbusters. If there's only one podcast about movies and cinema that you listen to, make it this one. The Projection Booth Podcast, with new episodes available every week at projectionboothpodcast.com. In 1985, a curious phenomenon occurred. The Twilight Zone returned to television, featuring all new tales of mystery and imagination from the minds of Ray Bradbury, Harlan Ellison, George R.R. Martin, and Stephen King. Dreams for Sale, the Twilight Zone 85 podcast looks back at that land of shadow and substance and re-examines the groundbreaking successor to Rod Serling's legacy. Featuring new interviews with the show's creators and cast, Dreams for Sale can be found on iTunes and at twilightzone85.com. Dreams for sale. We'll be waiting for you in the Twilight Zone. All right, we are back and we were talking about the Avengers. I mean the Predator. Uh, so like we've been talking about, like you just mentioned, Mike, I almost sat through the credits myself because I was convinced that there was going to be more to it. Yeah, luckily, have I told you about the Run P app? You have. Okay, so I pulled as soon as the credits started, I pulled out Run P and looked at it and said, "There's nothing after the credits." So I was like, "Boom, I'm out of here." And I was expecting that goofy ending from the first movie where they went through the whole cast and they're all smiling and that kind of stuff. I was expecting that. I was expecting a little Richard song over the end credits. I got none of that stuff, and that was like, this is what made the original Predator so much fun was because of that fucked up goofy ending and because of the the little richard song and just all of those great one-liners and stuff and in this one like i will admit i will fully admit when he said get to the choppers i laughed but there weren't a whole other other a lot of other times that i laughed at this and there were so many things that were sorry i'm, I'm on a roll there were so many things that were lost in dialogue like when they explained the relationship between keegan michael key's character and thomas jane's character I had no fucking idea what they were talking about other than that they had served together, but then their relationship? What the fuck was going on with that? I don't know what was happening there. Because they Nah, they were best friends. But they had something (laughs) happen between them in the military. Seemed like they were gay. Oh, maybe they were gay. I don't know. Like it would have been totally cool, right? Because why not? Pretty forward thinking on Shane Black's part. But like you said, Mike, there was like a dialogue like throwaway dialogue that they were talking about. I didn't catch it at all. Right. I don't know. I was too high to follow that shit. So, yeah. <laughs> You're such a shithead, Eric. <laughs> no, that's true. I was true. too high to follow that shit. Oh. I knew. I knew going into this movie that it was going to be a shit show. So I was like, I'm going to give this movie a fighting chance and I'm going to get so stoned before I watch it. It worked. I like this movie. <laughs> And I know it's bad. I know in my soul that this movie is bad, and I still like it. You were going to say something about one of the characters. I was going to say that Nettles, like, uh, according to Wikipedia, the source of all truth in the universe, he was he suffered a traumatic brain injury from a crash. Again, I didn't really get that. And the other thing that I found kind of funny uh, is that 
Thomas Jane's character was named Baxley. He was named after Craig R. Baxley, the stunt coordinator from the 1987 film, as well as the guy who played Mr. Ring in the Kolchak episode that we just discussed. Right. I did notice that. That was kind of cool. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate, though, that Thomas Jane isn't given more to do because I'm in a level with you guys. I think Thomas Jane would have been a better lead for this film. Thomas Jane has more gravitas than Milk Toast Boyd Holbrook. Yes. Thomas Jane is still hashtag Thomas Jane is my is my punisher. Uh, but I, I think he could have done. I mean, they initially cast Benicio del Toro in this film in the Boyd Holbrook role. And then they replaced him with Boyd Holbrook. When Boyd Holbrook shows up at the end with that beret on and stuff, I was just like, are you going out for Halloween? What the fuck is going on with you? He just right, did so not look right. all of a sudden bought into everything? Yeah. On top of everything else, like we're led to believe through the entire film that this is a character who has become disillusioned with the military because of the way that they were treating him. Oh, and they- yet at the end of the film, he like completely buys into everything and is like a government stooge. And they start to have discussions about what is killing versus murder and they talk about it for about a few seconds and they drop that like a hot potato because lord knows we don't want to talk about killing and murder in a movie called the predator for god's sake but it shouldn't be called the predator because the predator isn't what the thing actually is oh right right yeah it should be called like sport hunter yeah, the uh, the problem with I said like, it should be called oh, Sport I so Hunter. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> the problem with a film like The Predator is that you have to have some level of reverence and exposure to the source material to do this justice. And it's just surprising to me that the two people who wrote the script for this film did such a poor job with it. I still wonder how much is them, how much was reshoots, because there was a lot of reshoots going right, on with that's, this. That was the other. That was the other big thing about this is that the movie was like reshot into the ground. Because well, what I read, like the third act, it sounded like you could barely see what was going on because it all took place at night. I mean, it, it does become daylight very sudden in this thing because when they're in the forest, it's pretty dark out, and then by the time they get on that ship. And I had visions of John McClane riding a jet airplane when they got onto the ship, I will admit it. Uh, then it's very bright out. And then the whole thing with the water and the and Olivia Munn showing up with that invisibility ball and all that, that just was – that was such a mess, man. That was just – Wait a mess. second. Hold on. We got to go back to this invisibility ball. I will gloss over the fact that you guys just dropped a huge bombshell on me about a minute and a half ago that Benicio Del Toro was supposed to fucking be the lead role in this and movie. And he left. And he left. Which would have been way better. So this movie had so many chances. Uh, oh, I don't know if the movie would have been much better because it probably still would have been edited into the ground. Right. But beyond that, at least we would have had a main character that we were like, ah, oh, fuck yeah, Benicio is the shit. No, we probably would have said, what a waste of Benicio Del Toro's time. That's what we totally uh, would have said. Would have been know, like the mummy said, all over. That's why he bounced. Or- the werewolf or, or the dark tower where it's like man what are idris elba and matthew mcconaughey doing in this fucking movie yeah oh, literally the worst movie ever yeah both these guys tear it up anytime they're in anything else but good god why are they in this so what was the bombshell that we dropped on you was it the invisibility Whoa. ball no we haven't even talked about how stupid the invisibility ball is what the fuck is the invisibility ball? It's so stupid. Well, you have this cool it was thing. In Holbrook's asshole. It was. It came out of his butthole. But like, what the fuck? Like, why? Uh, who was like, okay? Yeah. There's nothing. There's there's nothing that shows you how it works or whatever. And also, fuck that. That's so stupid. Like. It, okay, just scientifically, and I'm not saying I'm a scientist, I only play one on TV, but, like, there's no fucking scientific way that that would even be feasible. I mean, not with science that we know. So, like, build it into the armor or something, so that, like, well, that's if what you're... the assumption has always been, right? Right, exactly! And so, like, why are you gonna fuck with canon and, like, turn it into something stupid? Like, just make it his armor, like, has some sort of, like, weird... Uh, like semi holographic camouflage thing built into it. Like what? Like, uh, 
No, it was the, uh, it's that thing that was on the arm, right? It was like coordinates or something? Like, I thought that that's what they were trying to get. Can we finally talk about this fucking predator killer suit? So, at the end of the movie, there's a coffin, like, it looks like a, it looks like an H.R. Giger designed coffin. And... Boyd Holbrook's character is now a military shill. His son is apparently the smartest child in the world, because apparently if you have Asperger's, that means you're an idiot savant. This is Unix. I know this. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminded me of. And there's this this coffin that the military is examining, trying to figure out what it is, and it starts opening, and like we mentioned before... I had visions of a couple things. I thought it was going to either be Adrian Brody. That's what I looked over at my buddy and told him it was going to be. And then he looked over at me and said, it's going to be a xenomorph. And I said, there's no way. But theoretically, it was, that still could have made sense. Like you guys mentioned, it could have been Arnold Schwarzenegger digitally unaged, which would have kept with the idea that the Predators maybe kidnapped him or something. But no, we get the absolute stupidest fucking possible thing. It was so much shades of alien of um alien it was so much shades of independence day resurgence that it boggles my mind it's a a wrist gauntlet that turns you into a predator essentially yeah like it's a just cyber a predator, mechanic predator suit what it does is it creates the possibility for a sequel where it's predator versus mecha predator is what we're now looking at we have devolved into uh old school uh godzilla sequel ideas so the next movie will be called Predator versus Mecha Predator. It doesn't solve the whole we are terraforming your planet because the the the, the Chinese have sold us a hoax of climate change. I mean, it doesn't solve that problem at all, which is weird because that's the whole thing of like they're kind of ter- they're not terraforming the planet. They're just waiting for us to kill ourselves. But I guess next time they come down, now we have a suit that can fight them. Ish. Or maybe we're going to take the fight to them. Oh, also, we'll go through the rift this time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I was no, reminded but, but, a lot of Prometheus watching this movie. That's how bad this whole retconning thing is going on. Well, Prome- Prometheus well, was an actually good movie, though, and this movie was complete and utter garbage. What? Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I will agree with Eric that Prometheus is a better movie than this. I am I a think... Prometheus apologist. That movie's I fantastic. Know, yeah. And I... every other alien movie that's in between Prometheus and Alien is garbage. So Covenant is garbage. Okay, well, there haven't been any other movies in between Prometheus and Alien Covenant. <laughs> First off. Secondly, uh, Prometheus is is better than this movie, but I can see what you mean, Mike, because the retconning in this movie... Is it retconning when they're just adding stuff to the origin? But also, like, whatever happened to Predators only come when it's super duper hot? Like, that was a big thing in the first two movies. Like, in the first movie... They're in like Colombia or some shit and it's like fucking hot as fuck. And then they make a big deal out of it. Like even in the first movie, uh, what's her face? God, what's the actress's name? Forget You're not her talking name. about Anyways. Hot, like temperature hot. You're talking about wartime. No, he's talking well, about like hot, like also, the temperature outside. Cause in Predator 2, like I'm, I'm talking about you were going to say, Eric, they make a point yeah. of saying like, it's, this is the hot streak in LA. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're talking. Talk- it's both actually both times. Like the, in in the first movie, uh, the God, I forget what her name is. I just watched this movie. Uh, Marie Conchita Alonso. There you go. She mentioned something that like there is this thing that comes and it only comes every couple of years, like when it's really fucking hot outside and like there's like all this like other crazy shit that happens when it comes or whatever. And then in the second movie, they make a point of saying like it's the hottest heat wave in 10 years or whatever in Los Angeles. And then there's all this gang violence going on and all this shit. So it's like the Predator always shows up when it's a literal and metaphorical hotspot. So it's like it needs to be a real fucking hot outside and B, there needs to be a lot of bloodshed going on. And then the Predator shows up. And this time, it's just like suburbia in October? I, in what? British Columbia. Like, it's, it isn't... Wait, it's in British Columbia? They're in Canada the whole time? That's where the movie is filmed. Well, that's not where it's set because America... A nondescript American town. Nondescript America town in October around fucking Halloween. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Guys! 
Did nobody watch the first two Predator movies before they made this movie? Like, what happened? Well, you have to... It's almost like one of the people who was in one of the original movies definitely didn't direct this movie. Also, the fact that you said that uh, the guy who wrote the original movie helped write this movie? Am I am I correct in that statement or am I incorrect in that statement? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember Fred Decker having anything to do with the script for the original one. Okay, so All I right. was incorrect in that statement. Decker did, you know, Night of the Creeps, and he also worked on the Monster Squad with Shane Black, but yeah, no. He also worked on RoboCop 3. Yes, he did. He was like the man behind RoboCop 3. He also directed it. Anyway. Anyways. So, come on. The real people. issue is Shane Black, not Fred Decker. I don't care who the issue is, because there was a lot of people in between the person who wrote this movie and then the movie going into my eye holes. And it's a lot of people's faults. There's many people to blame for how stupid this movie is. The more we talk about this movie, the more angry it makes me. And I was so happy walking out of the theater of this movie on Saturday night. I just want to go back to a simpler time. Yeah, let's go back. And I mean, I, I just, you know, got my copy of Predator 2 out. I'm ready to watch that. Hey, I, how I was so sad. Like, I know uh, uh, Busey was not looking that great um, with the last time we saw him in this movie, but I really expected one of those cheesy moments at the end when he comes back, when he's there with the other scientists and he just has, like, his arm in a sling and, like, he's going to be fine in the future. Like, I wanted him to come back. Where was he? Where was Jake Busey? They made a point of showing that he was still alive, and yet he doesn't come right? back. I mean, I, I, did they, okay, this is the same film that cut out Edward James Olmos. Wait a he second. In, Edward James Olmos is in this movie? He was, but he was cut out. So you had the best actor that you had in the movie, and you cut him completely out of the movie. Was that supposed to be a nod to him with that weird tinfoil unicorn that nettles gave to her <laughs> oh dear god oh my god i think it was and that oh, weird shit. cut to all of a sudden they have all that junk inside of the the yellow bandana and he even says like well i don't know where he kept this like the hula girl it's like i don't know where he kept this i'm like so how are we supposed to identify that with the character like do they, they all have like these totems but apparently we never see the one totem of the one guy he kept it in his book. Okay, like the gold. He had a hula girl in his... I've held this hula girl in my ass three years. So, I mean, again, you know, I, I just... I think we need to stop making these movies, I think is the big takeaway here. Uh, I think we need to stop with the alien movies and stop with the predator movies because I think for me personally at this point, we're doing more harm than good. Oh, I got one more for you. Got one more for you. When, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. when the coffin opens up, it's Arnold, but it's not Dutch. It's a Terminator. And now oh, that is the Predator killer. Because I know that Dark Horse did Terminator versus Predator at one point. They must have. Oh, oh man. That I would be so cool. I would have jumped out of my fucking seat and screamed. And then it just the goes. I would have been, been like, all is forgiven. And then cut. Do, do, do. Do, do, oh do. my god i think i would have shit right there in the movie theater just fucking that's shit. a crossover that needs to happen i mean fuck alien versus predator after the first movie and let's just have predator versus terminator well let's go back to the fact that alien versus predator is the only predator film that's ever been rated pg-13 this movie initially was going to be pg-13 and ended up not being pg-13 which i think is a good thing however this movie didn't really take advantage they had of it. no for i mean no. not and around that little kid, yeah, which they was said really, the- like, when they said, watch your language, and then I realized, oh, they're talking about the R word, not the F word. I was like, yeah, if I was the dad, I would say, watch your fucking language around my kid. Yeah. I, I mean, the violence wasn't no. spectacular. It was okay. It definitely wasn't what I was hoping for from an R-rated Predator, Predator film, film made, made in 2018. 2018. Yeah, yeah, no. I wanted, I wanted eviscerations, eviscerations and guts and blood and, blood and, all, and sorts all sorts of crazy, crazy shit. shit. And you man, want you it wanted to be the, to be the most hardcore, hardcore version of the Predator, of the Predator that we've seen, seen. And it, wasn't it wasn't even close. Even close. Fuck my fuck expectations, yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. Fuck, fuck them and fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, that's, that's my name. Well, I think, well, I think, uh, I think this, this movie, movie suffers, suffers from, from a lot of the lot same, same I mean, I don't know. I don't know. They, they, they have made a decent amount of Predator, of Predator movies, movies at this point, since this is the sixth one. And there's probably like two good ones, and then a couple of okay ones, and at least like one really bad one. And I think 
think at this point, like, we just need to put the predator to bed until, until somebody, somebody actually, actually comes, comes out with an idea that's, that's like worth, worth making, making a, movie a movie on. on. Like, like, and and, and is, is it just another, another military, military guys, guys versus the predator? The predator. Exactly. exactly. Like, predators, predators, even though it even came, though it came out, almost out almost 10 years ago, years ago was essentially like a, like a different, different take on the same, on the same idea of predator. So still set in the jungle, but it's in a jungle on a different planet that you figure out afterwards because the predators are fucking Carding, carding in, in motherfuckers, motherfuckers for hunting, for hunting season. season. And they find, and they the, find baddest the baddest motherfuckers, motherfuckers on, on Earth and they bring, and they bring them, them here. That was that a cool, cool idea. Like yeah. Damn, damn with, with predators. Yeah, 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 kind, yeah of. kind of. And that's, and a, that's cool a cool concept. concept. I'm like, I'm like cool, cool, awesome. awesome. Like, like, it, gives it gives me a reason, reason to, like, to like understand, understand why these people are, are in this situation or whatever and why they have to fucking fight for their survival and all this other shit. And then they do actually a fairly decent job of like building characters in that movie. As opposed to this movie where you just have a rag Tag group, group, group of mentally, mentally unstable, unstable ex soldiers or whatever. Or whatever. Who, who? I mean, I mean, okay, okay, all right, all right. You have, you have me. Like, like, that seems that like seems it might be a cool, cool idea. idea. Like, you, like could you could get into get some weird situations. It could be cool. It could be hardcore. It could be funny. It could, it could, it could go into a, a, a lot of different things. things. And then, and then you, don't you don't spend, spend any time making making care about literally any of them. So that when they die, I'm just like, oh man, that dude died. And then they're fucking dead. We were talking about the nun last week. And we were and talking, we were talking about, about how you know what, you know that, what franchise that franchise needs, needs is, it, is needs it needs somebody, somebody new, new to come, to come in, in and write something, write something totally, totally different, different and, and we need, we need a, new a new perspective. I think that's, I think what, that's we what we need in the Predator. In the predator we, need we need somebody to come, somebody to come in, come in with, a with a totally, totally different, different idea, idea that like, that like nobody's, nobody's thought, thought of yet that is still awesome, simple enough to be like, okay, we can wrap our brains around it and then just fucking make it happen. The Predator universe, even like including the comics and everything, the Predator has fought Fucking Batman, 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 for God's, for God's sakes. sakes. And fucking, and fucking Archie. Archie. And, and Superman. Superman. Yeah, yeah. Like, like do, do some weird, some weird shit. shit. I'm not I'm saying, saying that the Predator needs to fight, fight fucking Batman, Batman or whatever, or whatever in, a movie, in a movie for me to for go me to. Go to it. It. I'm, I'm just saying, like, make it, make it interesting. Okay? okay? Like, but, but, but do something to fight the Terminator. But he needs to fight the Terminator is what we're saying. So if we can make that happen, that would be great. Well, and see, it comes back to this idea that anytime you make a movie about a franchise, you have to make it recognizable, recognizable to, to the other films, films as, opposed as opposed to just to doing, doing something ape shit, ape shit with which, which I mean, I mean let's, be honest, let's be honest right, right Mike, Mike you, you and Eric and I would totally, I would totally be, on be on board for just a weird, weird predator sure, sure. Terminator that doesn't, that doesn't slot, slot into, into the continuity, continuity. They, they find, find a way for it to quote unquote, unquote make, make sense in canon, canon but they're, but they're not, not going out of their way to really be beholden to the fans it's just a cool movie where predators fight Terminator and then you have a Stinger, stinger at, the at the end where you set up, set up alien, versus alien versus Predator, right, predator right. versus Terminator. There you go. There you go. In, instead, 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 all of these, all of these movies, movies we've been getting, it be alien, alien be it predator, predator, they, they really, really go out of their way to slot themselves, themselves into continuity, into, continuity, into canon, canon, and, and, also, and also, to also to just retread, retread old, old ground, ground or, or in alien's, alien's case, retread, retread new, new old <laughs> ground. There's a lot of retconning that happens in a lot of franchises now when they come out with sequels, like so much, much later, later that needs, that needs to, to not, not happen. happen. Like, like the, I, think I think one of the things that, that as you're excited, excited for Halloween. For Halloween. I'm, excited I'm excited about Halloween. Halloween. And you, know and you know what? It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna retcon, retcon a lot of shit, but it's gonna, but it's gonna retcon, retcon all the, all the shitty, movies shitty movies that nobody gives a shit about. about. So, like, so like Halloween, Halloween 4, 4 which, which, I mean, I mean, okay, okay, Halloween 4 is actually kind of good. But still, like, everything past, like, Halloween 2 is basically just like, it doesn't exist in this universe. Which, I'm okay with. Right, right. So, so, so yeah. So yeah. Everything, everything Halloween, Halloween four, four and whatever. And whatever. I mean, I mean, anything, anything Michael, Michael Myers. Myers there's, a, there's a something, something about, about head field on the TV, TV inside, inside of Halloween, Halloween three. three. But I'll, I'll shut up. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Keep it honest. Uh, oh, God. God. Anyways, anyways, but like, like, I, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. The new Halloween movie we have yet to, you know, we have yet to see it. We have yet to see it. Don't don't know. You know. How, how, how true, true it's, gonna it's gonna be, and, and how, how many liberties, many liberties they're going to be taking. My guess, guess is it's going to be, gonna be like, we're like we're talking about, about sort of the best of both worlds, where it sticks to canon as much as it can, while instead of 
retconning, retconning the universe, the universe. It, expands it expands on the universe. On the universe. Um, um, and that movie's, and that movie's like, like, you know, you know, I don't know. There's a lot there's of people, a lot people involved, involved in that movie, in that, movie that, that I am excited, excited for, that for that movie to come out. Come out. You know, John, John Carpenter has been a big part of that movie since the fucking go. And I think that's great. Does that necessarily mean it's going to be a good movie? No, no. It might be seen by this film because the people that were involved in this film, I don't know about you, but I honestly got thought Shane Black was really going to get it. Oh, hell yeah. I had the biggest expectations for this because I really, really like like a lot of stuff that that he does. does. I mean, I I think think Kiss Kiss Bang 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 was was one of the best best movies movies of that that decade. decade. I watched watched, uh, uh, Iron Iron Man 3 3 in preparation preparation for for Predator. Predator. The Predator. Predator. And I hate to say it because Shane Black directed Iron Man 3. Yeah, but Shane Black directed Iron Man 3 under the tree of Marvel and Disney. But this Predator movie feels more like it's like this Predator movie feels more like a rated R Marvel movie starring the Predator than it does anything else. Else. It's, got, it's like, got like I will, I will give you that. See, see? I, watch I watch this movie, this movie and, I and I go like, okay, okay, this is this just, is just you, watch you watch the Predator, the Predator and, it's and it's not a Predator movie. movie. It's, just, it's just the popular, popular movie, movie of the, of the decade, decade, but in, but in a Predator, predator skin. skin. Does that make does that sense? Make like, like it's just, it's just repackaged everything, everything else that we see all the, all the time. But it's just a Predator. You know, you know, it's 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 just wearing a Predator suit. I mean, you're not wrong. Most of the Marvel movies that we've watched in the third act completely devolve into CGI nonsense. That's like that's the like biggest the biggest complaint, complaint of any Marvel, any Marvel movie, movie that's being made, made now is that the is third, that the third act, act is complete, complete like CGI, like CGI it just crutches crutches on the CGI. And look what and happened, happened in this movie? Yeah, yeah. And it was and bad, it was bad CGI, CGI too. too. Like, there was like, there one, one part where like, where, like the super predator, predator was like, was, like up, in up in the trees or something, and there was, and there was a shot where they where look up with like with like a flashlight, and you look into his face, and I and I audibly laugh like an idiot because because the shot looks so bad. I was I was in the theater. Just laughing, laughing because that was when the predator was, was eating, eating someone. It looked like. Yeah, yeah, and it was and it was fucking, fucking stupid. stupid. Like, that, that scene should be, should be disgusting, disgusting and gnarly, and gnarly and brutal. And brutal. And it should, and make, it should everybody make everybody in the theater, in the theater go, go like, "Oh my god, god what, is what is happening?" happening? And, instead, and instead, I literally, I literally went, ah! "So, so that should never just, just for the record, the original Halloween scene playing twice on TV during the actual events of Halloween three. So, so is that that and then a Movie with yeah, him. Yeah. So, so I guess I guess they're watching, watching the, movie, the movie of the Halloween. Halloween. So, so it maybe it doesn't, doesn't take place in the Halloween, Halloween universe, universe because, because they wouldn't have, wouldn't have uh, a movie, uh, movie about, about the events. events. Ah, so, yeah, 100% correct. correct. Well, and again, well, and again Halloween, Halloween three is the second best. I agree. It really is, and it's because it doesn't take place in the same universe. And also, it's a movie that when it came out was like drilled into the ground for being a Halloween movie. But now it's really kind of come into its own. Like really, really great, great film. Well, well remember, remember how, how anthology, anthology movies, movies like, like were not, not like, like an anthology, an anthology series, series like was, was never, never a thing. thing. And then, and then, like, imagine, imagine now, now if they came, if they came out with this concept, concept of like, hey, we're, we're going to come out with a movie, with a movie every, every year, year that's going to be called Halloween, Halloween but it's going to be different every year. It's going to be a different story. That would be the shit. I would be all about that. I mean, American horror story or whatever that show is. remember that time that I hate American Horror Story? Yeah, yeah. It is so, so, so bad. bad. That's so, so, so bad. It's so, so, oh my god. And it, the, and it started, started up again. again. The second, the second season, season was the highlight, highlight of, everything. of everything. And it was, and it was because, because they just threw everything, everything at the wall. They had Nazis. And they had zombies. That's what they do at every season, man. No, but season two, they really went for it. There was aliens and Nazis and zombies. And then like an insane asylum. And then there was also a Serial murder, murder, like on, like top, on top of that, of that. And, and all this other shit. Like, like it was, it was literally, literally all of all the of things, things, all, all of the horrifying, horrifying things, things, all in all one, one season. season. And, I and, like, and I was okay, like, okay, that's it. That's you, it. Guys you guys blew your wad on, on the second, second season. season. What are you, what are you even, even gonna, gonna do after this? this? The answer, the answer was, was nothing, nothing worth watching. Now they're now they're doing their big crossover season. They've 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 officially peaked, folks. Uh oh. So speaking of peaking, what would you give the Predator? Give it a, give it a two. two. 
What about you, what about you Eric? Eric? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, it a, give it a two. two also, also. Um, um, but, I, but I want, I want the, people the people at home, at home or in your car, or, in your car, or on, the on the toilet, toilet or wherever, or wherever you're listening, you're listening to this, to know, to know that this, that this is, is a fun, fun too. It's not a this movie sucks too. It's a temper your expectations and and get get real stone before watching this movie too. And you'll have a good time. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a two as well. And I mean, I mean, I I echo everything that Eric just said. You're able to kind of kind of overlook a lot of of the really, really bad, bad parts, parts of this movie, of this movie which, which there are a lot, a lot of them, and overlook, and overlook the, problems the problems with editing, editing continuity, continuity, and a and coherent, coherent plot, plot, then you're going to have gonna fun. fun. But at the end of the day, why, why would you watch this anyways? anyways? Just, go just go watch the original Predator. 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 It's essentially, it's essentially the same movie, movie. Yeah. but yeah. it has a much more charismatic lead in Schwarzenegger, who, I mean, in regards to charismatic action hero leads, he is at the top of the pantheon with two other people. You know Arnold Schwarzenegger theory about how he's in every single movie? Movie, he just doesn't, doesn't make it in time, time for a lot, a lot of them. I wish, I wish that he would have made, made it in time, in time for, this for this movie. It would have made, made it way, way better. Way better. Well, he's becoming well, he's very discerning, discerning with his cameos. With his cameos. With his cameos. With his cameos. You know you what? You become, become governor, governor one fucking, fucking time, and then you just decide, like, I don't need to be in every single movie ever. Pretty much, Pretty yeah, much. He, was, he was in <laughs> Around the World in 80 Days, days. So, so there you there go. You go. <laughs> so uh, we'll, 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 take we'll take another break, break. we'll play a preview for the next Culture Cast. cast. Isn't Jackie, Jackie Chan, Chan in that movie? In that movie? <laughs>
That's right. The next culture cast, we're gonna be talking about. Hara That's right. The next culture Kiri. cast, we're gonna be talking about so, Hara uh, Kiri. Until then, so, uh, where can people until find then, you? Where Mr. can White? people find you? Can find me you, over Mr. at Projection. Can find me over at Projection.com or on Twitter. And you like things like that? You like things like that? You can go to Pro Booth Cast, which is horrible Twitter handle, and I apologize every single time. You can do better, man. Oh no! I heard his feelings. Oh no! I heard his feelings. Such a dick, Eric. I'll be honest. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's such a dick, you can Eric. Chris and I so jaw sorry. on about the night stalker, on about Jack the night stalker, Carl Kolchak, and we're at Kolchaktapes.com. And we're looking at the doing a new venture mid- where we're looking at the version of Twilight Zone, version of Twilight Zone, Twilight Zone eighty five dot com, which is our podcast, Dreams for Sale. People can find me. People can find me. Uh, nowhere on the internet. I am nowhere on the internet. Internet circles I'm are getting get my increasingly internet smaller circles smaller are getting smaller increasingly smaller, 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 smaller. It's not Twitter there. Is now you can't gone. tweet me. It's I don't not watch there. your tweets. You can't tweet don't me. Even I don't mention watch your me tweets. on the Twitter. Don't uh, even mention Facebook, me on the Twitter. Also not uh, there. Instagram. Instagram we'll see also not there. Instagram. If you can find me, you can find me, and I'll be there. Find me, you can find me, and I'll be there. This man is a liar. But please head over to culturecast.com. Please head over to culturecast.com where you can find out more about today's episode you'll find links to itunes and to patreon if you want to kick a couple dollars our way if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music big thanks to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the intro music if you want to kick a couple dollars our way we've got a couple donor tiers big thanks as always to eric and mavoka for the you know how we do, I'm just two step, strike in my right hand, hold in my other hand, get into the money, oh man, two step, post it with the crew, with the crew, yeah, you know how we do, hey, two step, you know what I'm saying, one, two, one, two, Ben Jammin, aka the Black T, you know what I'm saying, catch me with my crew, every day, two step.